everybody and welcome to today's tutorial. Today we're going to be going through energy profiles. Okay, so um, we have to go through basically exothermic, endothermic reactions um, and have a look at what on earth an energy profile is, okay? So let's have a look at the two cases of reactions you generally have. Um, generally reactions get broken down into two parts. You have an exothermic, exothermic reaction and then you have endothermic. Endothermic. So the difference between the two is um, what they do to their energy. Okay, so exothermic equations actually release energy. So they release, release energy. Okay, and in terms of um, endothermic, well, endothermic does the opposite. It actually requires energy or absorbs energy. Absorbs energy. Okay, so um, yeah, that's the fundamental thing to understand. Now, what we can also look at um, is a case um, of exothermic, uh, an exothermic example in our everyday life. Um, for example, fuel in your in your car, your petrol or your gas or whatever you use. Um, obviously, in the fuel, there's some energy, and to get your car moving, um, you have to input you have to release the energy from the fuel into the car. Okay, so that's a case of an exothermic. So fuel would be a case of exothermic, okay? Um, an endothermic case is a case where um, your, your reaction is actually absorbing heat from the surroundings. So instead of giving it off and making the surface of your like table or whatever hot, it actually takes the heat away. So it can be thought of as a cold pack in the cold pack gel there's a reaction and it takes away the heat from your swelling um, region or um, photosynthesis you know the plants trees everything um, they grow off sunlight well basically what they do is they take the energy of the sun and convert it into sugar energy so that's actually a um, energy requiring process okay so let's have a look at um, what the delta H, H set, the delta H value says about these two different types of reactions. So delta H, delta H is actually referred to as the product, product, take away the reactants. To be more specific, it's the energy of the product, take away the energy of the reactant. And therefore, in an exothermic case, you will find that the delta H value is actually negative. Delta H is negative. I just think of it as energy is being released. So it's negative, it's going to get thrown into the surroundings. And in an endothermic case, the delta H becomes, delta H, whoops, delta H is actually positive. All right, so these two cases are very important that you understand that, okay? And um, so you understand that exo is negative, endo is positive, endo absorbs energy, exo releases energy. Okay? So that's what you have to understand about these two reactions. Now, let's go to the energy profile stuff and what it is basically. So, an energy profile is a nice visual way of um, expressing what is happening in your reaction. So you're able to show a graph of what has happened to the energy of a certain reaction. So let's, uh, let us see, um, my makeup reaction, haven't got one with me, I'll just use this one, uh, trustworthy reaction which I always use. Okay, let's say we have this one. Now, if this happens to be an endothermic case versus an exothermic case, let's have a look at the difference between the two. So I'm very lazy today, I can't be bothered writing thermic, uh, but you get the idea. Okay, so. An endothermic case, if we draw an energy profile, an energy profile basically shows you the energy here. Okay, so energy is in generally in kilojoules per mole. Okay, and then here on the um, x axis, it's actually reaction pathway. It doesn't really have a unit, okay, so you don't really need this, but um, generally they have it. Okay, so an endothermic reaction. Um, an endothermic case is when you basically go from more stable things, so lower energy reactants, to more unstable things, okay? 
So think of it as being uh, photosynthesis. In photosynthesis, you're taking carbon dioxide and you're taking water, both of which are very stable, and you're basically um, creating sugar, which has more energy in it than carbon dioxide and water ever do. Okay, so you're going from a low energy to a higher energy. And so in this case, what you need to do is you input energy. You may think that you're actually going up like that to link those two. You're actually making this hill thing here. And the reason why it's that hill is this is known as the activation energy. You need to put a little bit extra energy to break up um, the atoms within those molecules. Okay, so you need to put a little bit more. That's always the case. So that will be a um, endothermic energy profile where the actual enthalpy, the um, the difference between products, take away reactants, is here. Okay, not there. Okay, so it's um, there. Um, and then the next case, the exothermic case, if our reaction was instead exothermic, what we would find in an exothermic case, we're taking something like fuel and we're combusting it to make you know, carbon dioxide and water. So we're actually starting from something very highly energetic and ending up with something more stable, something less energetic, okay? And so we still need to put in that activation energy and stuff, but this time our delta H value is going to be here, okay? And we're going to input a little bit of energy and we're going to release a lot. Okay, so in this case we release the energy, as you can see the energy gets released into the surroundings. In this case we need energy from the surroundings. And yeah, so those two are examples of how we get the energy profiles and the difference between the two exothermic and endothermic cases. Um, in the next tutorial we'll be having a look at um, some examples and also we need to have a look at more calculation based questions. So this is just theory. I hope you enjoyed today's presentation and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. See ya.